Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to episode 83 of our SpaceX and Starbase weekly updates. Before we begin this week's episode, we here at Lab Padre want to thank you all for your continued support as we approach our second straight year of bringing you these Starbase updates. As you may know, producing these episodes involves extensive research, time, and editing to maintain the high level of quality and accuracy you've come to expect. If you like our content and would like to help us continue covering all things Starbase, consider supporting us on Patreon or becoming a member here on YouTube. It's because of our viewers and supporters that makes all of this possible. Now without further ado, let's dig in. Starting things off on Friday, Starship 24.2 was relocated to Massey's test site. This test article was built to verify the strength of the payload bay with the Starlink deployment door. The first of the last row of columns for the Star Factory expansion closest to Highway 4 began to be placed. These columns are the structural support for what will be the tallest parts of the new building where nose cones will be assembled. Over at the Rocket Garden, the flaps were deployed on Ship 28, which is still on the engine installation stand. From all appearances, everything on the ship's control surfaces seemed to be in working order. Chief also caught some great shots of the Starship HLS test article that is set up on the far side of the village from the build site. This white painted nose cone is likely being used to design and develop the crew and cargo spaces for the Starship that will land NASA astronauts on the moon. Early Saturday saw the booster thrust simulator relocated to the rocket garden returning from where it was stored at Massey's. By Monday morning, the first roof section for the final roadside stretch of the Star Factory expansion was connected to one of the cranes and then was lifted into place. Over at the launch site Tuesday saw the grid fins tested on Super Heavy Booster 9 as technicians continue to do checkouts of the vehicle during the ongoing moratorium on flights. A Tesla Cybertruck arrived at Starbase and took a tour of the facilities. Promotional material for the new truck was being filmed on site, showing off its towing capacity with a Raptor vacuum engine. A new set of manifolds for the propellant farm's heat exchangers were delivered to the launch site on Wednesday, possibly for the liquid oxygen side of the system. Back at the build site, the bridge crane trolleys, which will be resting on the bridge's girders that span the open links of the Mega Bay 2, were delivered. Starship 29 went through another round of cryo testing at Massey's test site with the partial fill of both of the vehicle's main propellant tanks. Throughout the day, Wednesday, Chief was on site as the Cybertruck with Vacuum Raptor 305 in tow was driven to various locations around Starbase as footage was captured by both traditional photographers as well as drones flying around the vehicle. Filming of promotional material for Cybertruck came to a close at Starbase after one of the camera drones collided with the Raptor vacuum engine, taking the drone out of commission. Meanwhile, a downcomber was brought into Mega Bay 1 and installed in Booster 13. The downcomber runs through the liquid oxygen tank down to a manifold that distributes fuel to the booster's engines. A ship transport stand was brought to the staging area near the orbital launch mount ahead of the destacking of Ship 25 from Booster 9. The ring cart and pressure trailer were then brought to the launch complex and staged near the orbital launch mount to keep Starship pressurized on the ground. The second roof section of the nose cone assembly hall was lifted into place on Thursday morning as construction crews rushed to get ahead of the afternoon storm. Strong winds peeled away parts of the Star Factory expansion's weatherproofing and tore a segment part away off Mega Bay 2's roof. Fortunately, the rest of the connection stood firm. On Thursday, the ship quick disconnect on the tower was retracted and Ship 25 was lifted off the top of the hot stage ring before being rotated to the side and lowered back onto its awaiting transport stand. While it's not yet clear what the purpose of this D-stack was, it is possible they stacked simply to verify whatever work was done recently and prefer to just leave the vehicles separate until they receive their launch license. It is also possible that additional adjustments are needed. Shortly after the ship was secured back onto the transport stand, crews began assembling scaffolding on the top deck of the orbital launch mount. This scaffolding location is what they use when they want crew access to liquid oxygen tanks. 
Whether there is an issue or if this is just an additional maintenance and checkouts due to the prolonged delay before flight is not immediately clear. Around the same time, crews were observed using a man lift to get access to the joint between the hot staging rings and Booster 9. Once again, this could indicate an issue that they are troubleshooting, but also could just be inspections to ensure everything is holding up well for the full stack. Mauricio with RGV Aerial Photography again brought us some amazing overhead shots of Starbase. Checking in at the build site, we can see that while on one side of the Star Factory expansion has finally reached the wall closest to Highway 4, groundwork is still underway for the next phase of the project that will build over the spots recently vacated by Tents 1 and 2. The installation of underground conduits and other systems is well underway, and we should see structural foundations being worked on in the near future. Moving over towards the new Mega Bay, we can see the two left bridge crane trolleys that were delivered earlier in the week. With all the bridge crane parts now on site, we will likely see them installed in the coming days. The metal decking is now installed on both sides of Mega Bay 2's top level with back corners left open for the installation of the elevator shafts. As soon as the bridge cranes are installed, we should see the steel for the middle of the building get installed and the rest of the decking placed to prepare for a concrete floor slab to be poured on top of it. Down at the launch site, work continues on the area out past the suborbital tank farm and test stand B. Surprisingly, it appears that they have begun covering the new area in asphalt, indicating that this area may just be a new parking lot rather than any kind of new test stand or tank farm expansion. Over at Cape Canaveral, Falcon 9 Booster 1060 finished its stay at the port side docks and was laid onto the horizontal transporter and sent to Roberts Road. Falcon 9 Booster 1069 launched its Starlink G6-19 mission that evening, sending 22 satellites to orbit. This was the booster's 10th flight and the final flight of the quarter. Sunday saw Signet Titan tow just read the instructions to see in support of the Starlink Group 6-21 mission ahead of its October 5th launch. Shortly before midnight, Falcon Heavy was laid down after its static fire, performed to verify the rocket ahead of the launch of the Psyche mission. Doug returned to port with Booster 1069 and a short fall of Gravitas on Tuesday. Doug also brought back both fairing halves from the flight. Wasting no time, Doug headed right back out to sea just four hours later to support the Starlink Group 6-21 mission. Thursday began with the successful launch of Falcon 9 Booster 1076, conducting its eighth flight, carrying the Starlink Group 6-21 mission into orbit. Booster 1069 concluded its stay at Port Canaveral's docks and was lowered onto the horizontal transporter for return to Roberts Road. Crosby Skipper towed a short follow Gravitas out to sea for the Starlink G6-22 mission, which is scheduled for launch on October 9th. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons. We'll see you next week, and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.